Despite the extremely fierce smartphone competition here in Malaysia, a smartphone brand by the name of Freon has decided to land in Malaysia as its first global market outside of China. So Freon is a Shenzhen-based company that's founded back in June 2022 by a team of experienced members from a company called Xiaoni, which is also a smartphone company that makes great smartphones back then. So yeah, this team has now moved on to this new company called Freon, and these are their two debut devices. This one is the M5 and the F9. They are both really great entry-level devices that I am honored to have reviewed them in recent times. So yeah, here's my thought about these two phones. Now let's start off by talking about the Freon F9 and this is an extreme entry-level phone and what I mean by that is that it really has entry-level hardware. Now for instance, it is powered by a rather low-powered Unisoc SC9863A processor which is actually very common on entry-level devices. It has 2GB of RAM and 64GB of storage but you do also have the option to purchase a 3GB RAM and 128GB storage configuration model. Now this is a 6.52 inch HD plus display that refreshes at 60 hertz it has a dual drop camera cutout and also it has a rather thick chin at the bottom and on the back here it is pretty much made with plastic but it's not the kind of cheap plastic that you would expect from some really really cheap devices this is still really solid plastic and i actually like the feel and aesthetic of it now um it runs on the Android 12 Go operating system because of its low power hardware, which means that you are getting some Google Go apps right over here, such as the Google Go app, which is essentially a stripped down version, a light version of the news app where you can still browse your news feed and all that and perform Google search. And you do also get a Gallery Go app, which is a very light version of Google's Gallery app, which is really, really simple as well. But otherwise, I find that the version of this Android 12 Go still has some full apps here such as YouTube and Google Maps which doesn't work on the Go version like we have seen before. So yeah, you are getting the full uh, features with Google Maps and YouTube if you use this phone. Now, speaking of entry-level hardware, you would have expect this phone to perform really, really slow, but all thanks to Android 12 Go's uh, lightweight operate, this lightweight operating system, you are able to experience rather, rather smooth transitions and all that right here. Though it's not exactly the smoothest experience as a flagship device, but you can see that it doesn't get choppy like phones last time. So yeah, this is a really great entry-level device for people like kids or senior folks who doesn't really require that much of features on a smartphone. And this phone even comes with a side-mounted fingerprint scanner so yeah i have to say that it's actually pretty complete as an entry-level device and when it comes to its cameras it has a dual camera system on the back here and mind you the secondary camera isn't some ai lens or whatsoever in fact uh, the main camera is a 30 megapixel lens and the secondary lens is a 2 megapixel macro lens so you can imagine that you can still take macro photos on this uh, 399 ringgit phone is actually pretty awesome and the front camera here you would have thought that they would have equipped it with a 5 megapixel camera but no they have in fact equipped the front camera with an 8 megapixel one and i can tell that its image quality is actually not too bad so here are the camera samples taken from the freon f9 and as you can see uh the 30 megapixel lens doesn't take the best nor the worst photos that we have seen out there but as an entry level phone i have to say that it is actually pretty okay when it comes to the quality so just don't expect this phone to perform great when it comes to Lola and all that because it doesn't work that well. So I'm just going to show you guys uh, how the camera app looks like right over here and as you can see it's a very simple looking camera app with all the modes right under there. It's probably taken from somewhere else as well but yeah this is a very standard camera interface that it's very easy to get around. Anyone would have just easily gotten used to it and you even get things like a night mode if you want to and the macro mode is right over here so it switches to the macro lens as well so you can basically try that out if you want to and basically I think that the quality is just acceptable. It's not uh, it's, it's not exceptional, but then I would say that it's just okay. And you get some of the features like beautification and filters and so on right inside the camera, which is what you can configure as well. The F9 has a 5000 mAh battery, which is similar to other entry phones that we have seen out there. So this phone has definitely no problem lasting up to a heavy day of usage and even last to the second day if you are not a heavy user. So the only complaint that I have about this phone is probably it's charging speed because it only charges at 10 watts and it's going to take a while to juice up this large 5000 mAh battery. So overall, I have to say that the F9 is a pretty decent entry-level phone. It has Android Go, so you really do not expect a lot of lags and all that while using this phone. And I think this is really a great phone for people who doesn't really uh, use a lot of apps on their smartphones. 
And now let's talk about the Freon M5, which is the more interesting device as compared to the F9, because this is a mid to entry level device because it has a mixture of mid range and entry level hardware inside. In terms of power, it is powered by a Unisoc T606 octa core chip with eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Now this phone costs 699 ringgit, which I think it is a pretty attractive price considering its hardware specifications out there. It still has a 6.52 inch display that's similar to the F9, except for the fact that it has a 90 hertz refresh rate, but that's just one thing that I can't understand because they just fitted an HD plus display here. I mean, for that kind of price, we should have expected at least a full HD plus display here. I mean, I don't mind not having a 90 hertz refresh rate, but truth to be told, this HD plus display is not all too bad. It is an IPS LCD display with very less reflection, and I really love the accuracy of the colors as well as it still doesn't look as pixelated as it should be, even though it has this resolution. Now, the build quality, of course, feels a lot better compared to the F9. It is less plasticky, and of course, on the back right here, this definitely feels like glass, but it is still a plastic bag here but instead of being like a separate piece or so on it is kind of like fixated into the phone's bag just like this and it's separated from the frame as well so yep this is definitely a more premium design as compared to the freon f9 now you still get a dew drop notch on this 6.5 inch display here and pretty much the same thick chin at the bottom here this phone also has a usb-c port at the bottom as well as a headphone jack and yeah over on the back here you will find a iphone 14 camera bump iPhone 14 style camera bump, but of course you don't get iPhone 14 cameras right here. So what you get here is basically a 50 megapixel main camera, which is way more impressive than the Freon F9. And it even has an eight megapixel ultra wide lens, which is, you know what, for a 699 ringgit device, you really don't expect a phone manufacturer to include an ultra wide lens, but they did it actually, because most ones I've seen out there, they just put a two megapixel macro lens or whatever, you know? And this third lens right here, also happens to be a usable one. It is actually a two megapixel macro lens. So yeah, for a 699 ringgit device, you are getting all three usable cameras here right on the back, which is pretty awesome. And the front camera here is an eight megapixel sensor that is similar to the Freon F9. In terms of software, the Freon M5 comes running Android 12 right out of the box. And what I'm so surprised about the software right here is that it is actually pretty much stored. I would even say that it is AOSP with GMS installed and there's no bloatware preloaded or any custom skin running on top here so yeah customization might be limited on the phone's user interface but i can tell you that this is probably something that many people would be looking at if they want a really clean phone without all the bloat and all that because you can pretty much install a custom launcher if you want to and if even if you want to add on some features you can install all that from the play store and that's really not an issue as well so Having eight gigabytes of RAM on this phone is also an advantage as well, which means you can multitask, you can have more apps open in the background. And this Unisoc chip is probably one of the best that I have seen out there. The T606 chipset is basically a really good chipset when it comes to everyday performance. I have no issues using Facebook, TikTok, and all that. I do not encounter any like serious lags and freezes throughout my usage. This is overall a very reliable phone when it comes to everyday performance and all that. But the only thing that this chipset doesn't do well is gaming. So even when you're playing like uh, games like Candy Crush and Home Skates, those like really, really lightweight puzzle games, they still lag, unfortunately. There's a very serious starter when you play these games, which is something that I do not like. But yeah, this phone is made for those like who really doesn't care too much about performance, but wants a phone that works well. Now, in terms of cameras, even though it has a 50 megapixel camera right on the back, it does the similar 12 megapixel binning stuff like other phones that we have seen out there. Um, the photos that you're seeing right here is unfortunately a little underwhelming, I would say. I mean, that's probably because I think Freon probably hasn't got their software right and all that. I've tried to like uh, take many pictures, even in good lighting conditions. The pictures that came up from this 50 megapixel lens just isn't that great. I think it's probably just similar to the Freon F9 as well. But yeah, I really hope that Freon would distribute a software update to address the issue of the camera quality because I think uh, the 50 megapixel lens on this phone really doesn't perform that bad in real world, right? Now, the 8 megapixel ultra wide camera takes uh, decent ultra wide shots. It's definitely wide enough, but as you can see, the quality is still pretty underwhelming. It has a uh, pretty grainy stuff and there's very obvious noise out there. So yeah, um, it's something that I think Freon should be working at when it comes to improving its software. The front selfie camera, well, it's an 8 megapixel camera. I think the quality is okay for an entry level phone. Yeah. 
uh, it's, that's pretty much what I can say about it. So this phone comes with a similar 5,000 mAh battery, but it supports a faster 18 watt fast charging speed, which I can finally accept that. I mean, it still takes a while to charge up this phone, but at least it's still a little faster than the Freon F9 that you do need to wait for two hours for this phone to get fully charged. Now, as a new smartphone brand, I definitely commend Freon for coming into Malaysia despite this competitive market, and they price the devices really competitively as well. The Freon F9 retails at 399 ringgit, and if you would like to get the 3GB RAM and 120GB storage model, it only costs an extra 100 ringgit at 499 ringgit. Whereas the Freon M5, it costs 699 ringgit, and it's only available in one single variant. So yeah, these are actually very competitively priced devices. But, you know, as a new smartphone brand, they definitely need a lot more attention when it comes to branding and all that because as of now there's still not many retail points uh, for this brand right now the only way that you can purchase this phones is to head on over to their official shopping store and purchase it right from there so this company um they shared quite a lot of things during their launch like they say that they are going to expand their retail presence to over 90 countries in a year and they are going to do other things such as uh, smart electric vehicles and like brain computer interfaces they have like very big plans for this brand so this company is really not just about smartphones it's actually more than just that and they want to achieve all these goals in three years time which is a bold claim but nonetheless commendable but yeah i definitely look forward to more stuff from Freon in the near future because apart from this entry-level phones which they actually just made it as an introduction to the Malaysian market because as you know very well there's really no point on targeting the premium market because those are already targeted by the big guys like Samsung and Oppo and all those other people so yeah, I think it's a great move that they start off with the entry-level side so that they get people noticing their brand but yeah they have other devices coming right up such as foldables and all that which I really can't wait to find out once they have that uh, going on in the later part of this year so yeah um that's all for my thoughts on these two entry level phones i think they are definitely good devices they don't come with any bloat when it comes to their software which is actually great as compared to many other smartphone brands that i've seen out there so yeah that's all for my thoughts on the freon f9 and the freon m5 let me know what are your thoughts in the comments down below and if you have any questions on these two phones let me know in the comments below as well as for now thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next one